Hi, this is David from Simply Maya, and in this tutorial I'm going to cover the process of modelling this knife you see in front of you while continuing our Getting Started with Maya series of tutorials. Now this is going to be a polygon modelling tutorial, and we're going to cover the basics of what that involves. So I'm going to start out with the new scene here, just so we're all on a level playing field. I'm going to bring back the grid, I'm going to press the space bar to go into the fore view, the space bar again to go into the front view, hit view, image planes, import image, and then I'm going to import this knife image. Now I'll leave a link in the description of where I found this image and we're going to use this as our base for modeling. Now if you've never done any modeling before, you pretty much always need reference to model from. You're always going to need some form of image to base your model upon. Even if you've drawn it yourself as a concept piece, you're pretty much going to start like this. So this one is imported in with a white background, which is rather uh, bright for us. It's going to be difficult to model on top of. So I'm going to go to the attribute editor and I'm going to whack the alpha gain down a bit just so I can see the edges, but not so much that glaring white. Now, again, if you've never modeled before, uh, in Maya, the starting point for pretty much every model is going to be a polygon primitive. So we could use for this a box or a plane. A plane will be easier and then we'll extrude the thickness to it later. So I'm going to bring in a polyplane and scale it up to about the right size. Now you'll also notice on our polyplane here is quite a lot of topology on our geometry here. So I'm going to go up to the channel box this time under inputs for the polyplane. I'm going to turn the subdivisions down to one. Now this goes for whether you're doing a game model or whether you don't really have a poly restrictive limit. Uh, you always want to model your base mesh with the lowest amount of topology possible. This will make it a lot easier for you in the end to correct your model, work on your model, make sure mistakes aren't happening, etc, etc. So I'm just moving and scaling this plane into place. Now, if you're not sure about the movement in Maya and scale and things like this, there's another tutorial on our channel um, which covers the basics of all of that stuff. So if you're not familiar with that, you might want to go and have a look at that one. So get it into the basic shape. Now, there's a few ways to manipulate these polygons. Uh, you've got the vertex, the edges and the faces. So we're going to use the vertex in this instance. So thumb F9 on the keyboard. And then you can just use the W key to move these guys around. And what we're attempting to do with the fewest amount, with the least amount of geometry possible, is match the outline of what we see on screen. Now, without having a ton of topology, it would be impossible without smoothing to make this so it was a sweeping curve. However, when we smooth it later, you'll see that it turns into a sweeping curve. Remember, the goal here is to keep the topology, the number of edges and vertex and things on this model as low as possible when we start. Now, if you look at what's happened to our one face here, you can see that obviously we're going to need more topology on this to follow the shape of this. So let's create some. Let's go to the modeling toolkit, multi cut, and I'm going to multi cut along here. And I'll do these one at a time just to start with, just so you can see what the process is. Then I'm going to move this vertex up to about here and this one down to around here, maybe. And then I'm going to continue to add these at edges, um, as many as I need to follow my outline, while also not going completely nuts. Um, so if I continue to do this, you can see I get to about here. Let's bring this one down a little bit. And then I'm going to need something to hold these curves. So one here, one in the middle and one at the end. So this looks very similar to the start of pretty much any modeling process that you're going to be trying to do. So how would this one best be represented over there? And this one needs to go up here. And this one needs to go up here. This one here. And this one's about in the right place. So you can see I'm keeping it incredibly low in terms of the amount of topo on this. Now we're going to have a little bit more in the end, of course, so we can get a much nicer shape. Also, even if you're modeling for games these days, you do have quite a lot of leeway with the number of triangles you can bring in mainly. Um, for a weapon like this that was going to be in a first person shooter, 
there is no hard and fast rules it depends on the engine you're working with the developer you're working with and whatnot uh, but you know if this was under 10,000 uh, triangles I'd be a happy man Right, okay, let's multi-cut across here because we're going to need one, across here because we're going to need one, and across here. And this time I'll select, whoops, go to Q to go into selection mode. I'll select two of the vertex at once and just scale them in and then move them into position. Can be a little bit faster. And indeed a little bit more accurate, depending. Now, I would normally take a bit more time getting this perfect to the silhouette of our reference piece, but I want to give you the principle of doing this. I don't want to bore you all to tears if I can possibly help it. Or if I haven't already done so, should I say. And that one looks a little lopsided there. There we go. Okay, now we've got the back to do. So we're going to cut across here, like so. And we're going to just move points. I mean, that's what a lot of modeling comes down to, folks. It's just moving vertex around, uh, knowing where to move them and where to put them, of course, is the trippy thing. And as you can see, we've got an issue now where we can't actually add anything here. We've run out of room, but we can add one along this way. So if I put this in here, now I'm holding control when I use the edge tool, uh, the multi-cut tool, which will put an edge loop all the way along. But in this case, that's absolutely fine because we need an edge all the way along to follow the profile of the blade so we can have a sharp edge on it. Now, one thing that has happened, if I go to object mode, is that we've created this situation here. So it's not following long up here. Now, this isn't actually a triangle or an n-gon, which should be a polygon with more than four sides. It is actually four sides, one, two, three, and four. In fact, if I put the edge display on, one, two, three, and four, because there's a vertex here that's not tied to anything. Now, that's not particularly good, um, so we will sort that out. Now, I'm going to just delete this edge, and I'm going to use my multi-cut tool to cut in up here and then up here. And that's sorted that. This is still a one, two, three, Four, so, ah, it's actually one, two, three, four, five. So that's created a five sider there, but it doesn't matter because we wanted to get rid of it anyway. So I'm just going to pop on, let's see here. Let's go from this vertex to this edge to up here. And that leaves me with this being a quad. Now, this is also a quad and this is a triangle. Now, triangles in models are generally a bad thing. If you're going for a game model, you would obviously triangulate it at the end anyway. But in a standard Maya model, your triangle generally isn't a t isn't good. An n-gon is worse, which is a polygon with more than four sides, but a triangle generally isn't considered a desirable thing. So we will come back and sort that out. For now, I just want to get my basic shape done in, and then I'll look for things like this at the end. Now, the odd triangle in a model, especially if the model isn't going to deform, isn't the end of the world. Um, a lot of people strenuously avoid any triangles at all. I actually leave them if they're in a sensible position. So we'll come back and look at that one at a later time. Now we're all following quite nicely here, quite nicely back here. We need this point that we created to go over to here. We're probably going to need another edge loop around here as well. And let's grab this vertex and push this one in. Now, you always want to follow your edge loops because there's no point. I've seen so many people, they model something really intricate down here. They're adding edge loops all over the place and then they go up here and it's a giant mess. Uh, so we want to make sure that that hasn't happened in our case. Now, you can see that's what happened in our case is our edge loop terminated before it went to the edge because it's hit this triangle. The one I said we'd come back and sort out. Well, honestly, that's a sorted out because... Um, this edge is now here. If I pull this out, you will see one, two, three, and four. So this is not the best arrangement of topology, but nor is it the worst. This happens a lot. This is how you would tie an edge off um, without having it go up and to here on the model. So realistically, this is fine. Okay. So we're all quads at the moment. There's no triangles on this model and there's no n-gons. And we followed it 
fairly precisely we could probably do with adding a bit more geometry a bit more topology to this geometry let me have a think yeah i'm probably going to put in one here now if you're working on a strict polygonal budget for the sake of the game then of course you wouldn't put these extra edges in at all but again on modern games you've got quite a limit nowadays um push these out and these out you have quite a limit it's not like it was in the bad old days when you couldn't go over like a thousand triangles for a lot of things uh, you were certainly more spoiled now Okie dokie, so that's looking rather okay. Now, if I smooth this, you'll see all those edges smooth out. Okay, the reason why when we had this vertex here with no edge connected to it, the reason why we had to fix that is because if I get this edge just to show you and I delete the edge, you'll notice our vertex is still there. And when I smooth, this does not smooth. Okay, whereas if you watch me connect the edge back up and I smooth, now it smooths. All right, so just that to bear in mind. So I am covering just the basics here, but that's the basic shape of this knife. Now we need to get this component out. So instead of pulling these vertex up here and chopping another edge loop, I'm just going to select the edge here and here and hit Control E to extrude and then pull the extrusion this way. And that gives me some more geometry to work with here. So vertex and I move it up to the point here and move this one say up to here and then we would probably need an edge loop around here to just get that whoops i cut an extra one by accident to just get that neat little tuck in there and maybe this one is a bit more like so obviously our reference being just a pe pencil sketch is not going to be exact okay and we're up to there. Let's do the same here. So probably somewhere like there, I should think. And then I'm going to need to multi-cut across here to bring in this curve. Like so. Okay, let's smooth that out and see what it looks like. So when you smooth as well you'll see the whole model smooths this will act differently when we give it some extrusion width now the one thing i also want to note is that i want to follow the line of this um i've forgotten what you call these on knives the guard i guess you would call it uh because we're going to extrude that from the actual model so i am going to need another cut here now i'm going to make sure that that cut hasn't done anything drastic up this end or this end it has not so we're good to go so let's follow that in like so and that's following the line of this quite neatly Okay, I would probably, if I could get away with it, can I get away with it? Connect this to something, because it's going to interfere with my smoothing. So let's have a look. Yep, we can get away with that. So I'm going to tie this vertex to this one, because this one isn't tied to anything internally here. So I'm going to go to target weld, to center. I'm going to grab this vertex and this one, and doink. Now this has left me with a triangle, but in this case, that's better than what I have here. Okay, that's left me with another triangle. I'm not going to be too concerned about it. Like I say, a triangle on a non-deforming surface, um, especially one that's not going to be an animated, isn't the end of the world. Try and keep them to a minimum, but... It's not something you need to particularly be terribly concerned about. Now, don't take me wrong here. You do not want a model full of triangles. And in fact, let's look at this triangle and see if there's any easy way into which we could make it a quad. If I cut across there, which cuts across there, that makes it into a quad. 
So for the sake of completeness here, let me just grab a vertex. And let's move this one. You can see it's a quad. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so, you know, not the end of the world, but sort them out when you can. Okay, now there is an easy way to tell if you have triangles or endons or anything else undesirable in your model. And that would be by, I'm going to press Control 1 to isolate this without the image plane we were using. And that would be to go to Select and let's see, Use Constraints. Now go into Face Mode, select All and Next and select here your N-sided. Now you'll notice that my poly count gives me no N-sided faces. And if you want this poly count, you need to go to Display heads up display and turn on poly count. You probably want this on. So if I go to quads, you'll see I have 73 faces on this model. I have 73 quads, triangles, none. Okay, now remember to push close and reset because if you don't, you won't be able to select any faces. Um, you'd only be able to select n-sided faces on this model and there isn't any. So I'm gonna close and reset and now I can select my faces again. So now we've got the basic shape of this guy going on. We need to get, um, let's just check this view. I need to make sure there's a line across here so we can extrude the hill out a little bit. There is. Okay, we need to get some thickness to it. So double click it to select it, hit Control E, and then we're gonna bring some thickness. So local translate Z and get it to about the thickness you're looking for. Now this would be the thickness of the blade. So 2.5, I'm going to do a quite a thick blade here so we can exaggerate the drop and make sure you selected all those faces and they're all good. Now, I'm also going to tell you that when you're modeling, you should go under lighting and make sure two-sided lighting is turned off. If I just undo this extrusion and turn two-sided lighting on, you'll see both sides of this model appear as gray, the standard Maya Lambert material. If I turn that off, which it should be off, it should not be on, one side will appear grey because that's the front faces and one side will appear black because that's the back faces. Now this can be incredibly important to know if you're dealing with the front of the face or the back of the face and with two sided lighting off, there's no way to tell. So control E for extrude again and local translate, I think we said 2.5. Or was that, yeah, that was 0.25 and there we go that would be the thickness of our blade now we need to create a sharp edge to it so let's come in and grab some faces here so this one this one this one this one and this one now you can do this without deleting the faces but I like to delete the faces so what I'm talking about is you can go target weld make sure it's on center grab some edges here grab this edge and this edge and just weld them together. I like to remove the faces first. I've had Maya in the past, hasn't been recently, but I have had in the past. Maya, give me some issues if they have faces in the way when you try that particular trick. So I like to just delete my faces before I begin and then it gives me an indication as well of what I'm welding together. So target weld on edge mode, this to this, this to this, this to this, and so on and so down the line and this to this. Now that's given us a triangular point here. This one I am genuinely not going to worry about though. Uh, there are means to fix it if you should need to. And in fact, mm, I want a central point on this model. So I'm going to multi-cut while holding control and at 50% I'm going to cut an edge loop which actually fixes that triangle because now it has one, two, three, four sides. So should have done the same on the other side. That should be all the way around there. And there should be a triangle at the end, which is now a quad. Okay, so there's always ways and means to fix these things. But the odd triangle, as I said, you know, I know people are going to go nuts at this, but really it's not that bad unless you've been given a specific brief that under no circumstances can you have that. Right, let's extrude the cross guard here, I believe it's called, the handle and the hilt here. So let's come in and select the faces we need to extrude, so all of these. 
and you'll need to get them on the other side also. This is one of the reasons we model just using a plane to start with, because then you don't have all this malarkey of taking the sides. Now, honestly, um, a better way of doing this might be to cut this model in half lengthways and then just uh, mirror it. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, so let's select faces here and let's select all these bottom faces and hit delete. Now we just have half of the model. So you just have half the model. You can see all the backside faces there. Okay, what this means is that we can now only extrude one side and then we will mirror this over and it will automatically do the other side. This is also very common in 3D modeling in Maya and in all, all types of 3D modeling that if you don't have to model both sides, then don't. Uh, it's just quicker. Well, obviously. So I'm selecting everything I need to extrude upwards. So this is going to extrude the hilt, the handle, and the cross guard. So Control E and bring this up. Now you probably should have some reference to how thick this thing should be, but that looks probably about right to me. Now I'm going to make the cross guard here would be a little thicker, and the hilt would be a little thicker. This depends on the design of your particular knife, though, of course. But this is the way I'm doing mine. So the hilt's going to be a little thicker that way. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to just do these one at a time. So I'm going to do this one first and just make it a little thicker than the handle. Not a lot, just a little, just to give us that separation between the two. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to make all of this a little wider. So control E and local translate just oh that's a bit too much. Okay. So something like that. Just to give us a little differential between the handle, the hilt and the cross guard. Okay. So if I was done here with this model and I wanted it back in two pieces, all I have to do is mesh and then mirror. Now I'm just going to hit mirror. You'll see it's mirrored in the wrong direction. So X is this way where you see the red arrow here. So that's positive X. So we want Y and negative Y. So if we put this onto Y and negative Y, you'll see that goes back together and we get our knife back. Now one thing to note is the merge distance. You'll see here that that doesn't look quite right, does it? This here. So if we put this down to a merge distance of 0.01, you'll see that that springs back open again. Okay, so that's all looking pretty good, although it's left us here with a hole, which is easy to fix. Uh, all we need to do is select this edge and this edge and hit fill hole. And there you go, we no longer have a hole there. Okay, so that's your basics. Let me turn the wireframe on shaded viewing. That would be the basics of how you create the very low poly interpretation of this, and it smooths out just fine. Let's look here. So the smoothing is pretty okay. Um, to help with the smoothing, I would probably put an edge in here and an edge in here, then just check those edges didn't ruin anything for me. They did not. And object mode and three. And that keeps the point nice and pointy. Okay, so let's bring back our reference. So control one. And with this knife smooth, you can see we've got a little bit more work to do. So I'm going to turn on x-ray. Okay, so we can really see here that this is smooth too much. It looks fine here, but smooth too much here. Now, the traditional way to hold a smoothing edge is just to put two edges either side of it. So I'm going to go onto the multi-cut tool. I'm going to hit control. I'm going to put an edge here and an edge here. And when I hit three, you can see that stays much more into its wheelhouse. Now I'm going to hit Q. I'm drag selecting now because remember our model is three dimensional. I'm going to push this one up here. That one looks pretty close. 
this needs to come up like so and I'm probably going to need another edge in here yep so again let's grab both of these and drag select remember because we are three-dimensional now okay and now we can really start to sort of get this thing into some semblance of shape here okay so now we pretty accurately match our reference let's come up to here this is looking not too bad not too excellent but not too bad there we go maybe a little tweak there okay so we're looking pretty good let's exaggerate that curve a little bit and exaggerate this curve a little bit and I'm going to say that we're pretty good here so let's look at this in the 3d view now smoothed uh, with no smoothing on this is 958 triangles or it will be when we triangulate it now we could make it much higher poly than this or much lower poly obviously if you were um, with a poly limit then I think even any modern game engine is going to have no problem if this was a weapon for a first person shooter with a thousand triangles. However, when we smooth it, you'll see it's 15,000 triangles. It's actually not that bad. It's because Maya's normal smoothing level is set to two or three with a smooth preview. If we were actually to go mesh and smooth here, you'll see that that only jumps up to 4,000 triangles, which really for you know a modern game engine is not uber terrible now i'm not going to smooth this generally i would only ever smooth anything after i have uv'd it now the other thing i wanted to look at is oops we have a face missing there that must have happened during our mesh mirroring operation again not a big deal just come across here you could probably hit bridge or mesh fill hole and bridge and that one's not going to do it for some weird reason let me just isolate this in the viewport and see why yeah it's not going to do it because it's a triangle so you would have to go uh, mesh fill hole okay now if you didn't want that to be a triangle again you can multi-cut down here with this tool yeah come on this tool is a little finicky sometimes uh, no it doesn't want to why do you not want to why do you hate me mr tool let's see if i can start the cut here and then come up here there we go now it does so we're going to have a bit of clean up here because i didn't align those so just target weld this time to target Put it in vertex mode and pull this one up here and that should do you no problem at all this is no longer a triangle okay so let's have a look at this and we want to go to q for selection mode and let's bring back the reference and yeah we're not too far off the point off the point <laughs> anyway before i make any terrible puns um let's continue to have a look around and see where we could make some small tweaks so this is smoothing into the blade way too much now we could add some extra edges around here but that's going to put an edge all the way around yeah all the way around the model which could get polygonally quite heavy so let's try doing it with a bevel so let's take the edge and the edge come all the way around follow this edge and up here and here and let's see edit mesh and bevel now we definitely don't want three segments that's a ton of polys so let's make this a little smaller and that's going to create a couple of little triangles in each corner if i use two segments that's going to create one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, a big end gone. One segment. One, two, three, four, five. No, that's going to create. That's going to create a lot of end gones. Uh, there's oftentimes issues with Maya's bevel tool. So in this case, I would just multi-cut around here and around here, and then possibly 
around let's see that wants to be nice and smooth so that's going to be an issue i would cut around the blade which i think i'm going to have to do manually so i'm going to hold shift to lock it on 90 percent and we are just cutting around the blade here this is to prevent too much smoothing now again if you were going for super low poly this wouldn't be necessary. Oh, I'm going to press return there to finish that off because the multi cut tool's giving me some jip again. There we go. Snap, please. Yes, Maya 2020 has some issues, uh, it has to be said. There we go, and there we go, and that should connect up with this one down here. Like so. Done. So, if we smooth this now, whoops, wrong key, you should see that it creates a hard line there between the hilt and the blade itself. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. I could go a little higher, a little more detailed. Uh, let's look at the back here and also keeping control of this. So one here and yeah, let's see. Is that going to be good? Yeah, quite like that. Just a little lip like it's worn down a little bit. And then at the back here, I want to make this one a bit sharper too. So I'm going to put a control loop here and probably one here. And let's smooth that, and that puts that little lip around it. Okay, so unsmoothed, we are up to 1,300 tries. So that's really the basics of polygon modeling in Maya. Now, a couple of things before I leave you to start the UV tutorial, and that would be, I would like to create what's called, I believe, a distal taper on this knife and it allows me to show you another thing you can do in Maya. Now, a distal taper is when the blade gets thinner towards the end, which I believe a lot of them do. So I'm going to select the last vertex here, and I'm going to push B to go into smooth uh, soft selection. And then I'm going to push and hold B, middle mouse drag this out until I've selected all of the vertex along here, like so. And then I'm just going to hit R and scale this in, and that will create for us a nice taper along the end. Now, depending on what you have your soft selection to, your taper will get, you know, more pronounced up the top here. But that seems fine for me. I just wanted a little extra definition. Another thing I would do to this guy is when we smooth this, this handle, although smooth, still looks a little bit like it would be uncomfortable to me. So in order to change that, we need to move this edge up here and this one up here. So I'm going to select the edge. I'm going to hit B to get off the soft selection tool. Q to go into select mode. I'm going to select it from here up until here. And then I'm going to use the slide on edge tool. So if I hold the shift and right mouse button, go down to slide edge, I'm just going to slide this edge back over to here. Now I would do the same thing on the other side, obviously. So same thing, get this little guy here. There we are. Come down to over here and get this little guy. Press G to repeat the last command and just slide that one down. Now, this is going to leave you with a vertex here that's not perhaps in the best position. So I might move that guy so it's a little more like so and a little bit more like so. But I'm just basically nitpicking now. Um, and you need to do the same thing on the back side. I will leave that on the reverse side of the model. I will leave that somewhat as an exercise for you. Just move that vertex in there. That should be good. Let's smooth that. And now the handle appears quite a bit smoother around this edge. Okay, so there is tweaks you can do to this model. Of course, you can spend some more time on it. If you wanted it lower poly, you don't have to put so many edge loops in to control the smoothing and etc, etc, etc. But I leave the rest of that to you. I will now go and complete the UV tutorial, which should be out either the same day as this one or the next day. So you shouldn't have to wait long for it. And before I sign off completely, just a reminder, if you look under your channel box, all of our scales and rotates and whatnot, well, in this case, our scales and transforms are all over the place. 
So I'm going to use the shelf which we created to move uh, this object to the origin. So this was the shelf I created in the tutorial. So I'm going to move it to the origin of the grid. I am going to center its pivot. So modify center pivot. And then the important thing, I'm going to freeze the transformations. So modify freeze transforms. So this will help us when we come to UV it later on. If you don't take those steps, you're also going to want to do an edit delete by type history on it. Uh, the history and the transforms and its rotation and relative location in space can have some impact on the UV. So again, thank you very much for watching. I know the world's a bit nuts right now. And hey, I hope this has been something of interest for you. I hope it's uh, maybe given you something to do for half an hour or so. So that's me signing off and I will see you again in the UV section. Thanks.